Hey guys, what's up? This is Andrew from Shinsenses.com. So in this video, guys, I want to make a full update on the Bitcoin because we have some nice things happening. So I want to show you what I think might happen. Let's get into it. And guys, so I've done a video on Bitcoin last week. So I told you guys there are a few different scenarios. So let me show you again this was my counting guys i'm here on the weekly time frame it's a very long term counting and the question i had was are we still in this fifth wave that is in red here or is it complete okay if it's complete then we're going to correct for one year if it's not complete then the correction that is lasting for the past two three months might be the end of the bear cycle and we might start a new cycle all right so i think unfortunately that it's complete so this is my view let me show you how it would look so here you have the different scenarios so let me put back this is not good bam bam this is not a giant abc take one two three four five okay the fifth is here this is a force Okay, the fifth is here. So I think we are at that, guys. So I think we are in the A wave, that a B wave is on the way, and that a C wave would come. Probably not to 15,000, but maybe to 27K. Okay, so I give this correction a few more months, at least two to six more months of correction on the Bitcoin, and then only I think we'll go higher. But to be honest, I don't know. Okay, so first, I think we are starting a new bullish cycle that will last at least a few weeks uh, so i'm going to show you why i think so i'm going to show you the levels we might go to if this is the case i will also show you what can signal that actually it's not only a few weeks rally but maybe longer and i will of course show you guys uh, what makes me think that we entered a two weeks or maybe more bullish cycle so to do that i'm going to zoom in I'm going to go on the daily time frame and I'm going to analyze what is happening here. Right. So as I showed you guys, I have different countings that both fit the price action. Here I'm on the logarithmic scale. Okay. Because I like to analyze Bitcoin using the logarithmic scale. It giving, it's giving me better reactions when I use my trend lines and it's giving me a better view. But on the short term, as you can see, if I put my trend line here, okay, I have one. This is not really reaction, three reactions, and we are coming here. Okay, so this trend line is giving me some resistance. But actually, if you go on a regular scale, it's feeling better. Why? Let me show you why, guys. It's very important to understand that because you never know what scale to use, right? Usually on assets that move more than 50% in one year, which is the case for Bitcoin, we're talking about 100 to 100% move in one year. The logarithmic scale is better, this one. But on short-term moves, look, here I have one reaction, two reactions using the regular scale. Then here it's giving me a third reaction, which is already the confirmation and it gets rejected brutally, which is already the confirmation that most traders are paying attention to this trend line. Okay, guys? Then we get strongly rejected. And then we come back to it and look guys what happens here. We get one more reaction here on the 1st of February on this trend line. And I was a seller here. Personally, I sold a little bit of my position around 39,000. And right now, then we got, we got another reaction guys. I'm just trying to show you guys here that this trend line is very visible by many traders and that it makes it resistance level that once broken properly with a nice, good and reliable breakout will deliver a continuation move on the upside. All right. This is what I'm trying to show you here. So here then another reaction. And then look at the breakout. Let's go on the hourly time frame. It's very visible. So let me adjust a little bit my trend line because I want to match the most recent past is the most important. All right, guys. So bam, here I'm matching exactly those levels. I mean, almost exactly. And look how many reactions. One, two, three, four. Okay. We can take those into account. I don't know if we can take it into account, but almost. All right. And here, one, two, three. And then where is the breakout, guys? The breakout happens here. And the volume increase, of course, is on the breakout. Look at this bar. This is the volume increase. So what is this telling me? 
I'm here on an hourly time frame, which is of course too short to analyze a three months correction. But on the hourly time frame, I can see that this level here was the level where bulls got massively in, okay? Because on the Bitcoin, you often have traps, traps that are created by whales who trap investors, retail investors on purpose. They know retail investors are here, they're gonna buy and they're gonna trap them and sell strongly afterwards. So then you would have, for example, a strong bullish candle, a lot of stop losses here, which would generate a volume, but not such a big volume, all right? This volume is too big. Look at the past before, to be a volume that is only coming from stop losses. So in here we have natural buyers. And then usually you would have a red candle following right after, because then they trap you, all right? And they sell, they don't want the price action to stay high too long, because this would mean this would create a signal for many buyers like myself. I was waiting until this morning before getting in. I'm going to get in right now. I'm going to show you how. For this reason, whenever the breakout lasts long enough, it will create a signal that uh, will very likely be followed by more investors. So here, let me go back on a daily time frame. Okay, and let's analyze this breakout. By the way, guys, I built a course. It's been like six months. I'm working on that, guys, almost full time. It's gonna be amazing. I'm almost finished. I'm recording the last videos. I have already written the whole PDF and I'm gonna give you guys a full step-by-step -step method to trade breakouts. I'm gonna explain how to use volume, how to use volatility, how to use momentum. I'm gonna show you the different entry methods that we can use. And basically this method, guys, would be something that you can refer to anytime that you see this kind of breakout. So I want to here to analyze that with you to show you how actually I see things. By the way, for those who are interested, just click on the link in the description of this video. You're going to arrive on the Elliott Wave landing page, but you can subscribe to that. So at least I have your email and you will be in the list whenever I will release my course. And so you're going to be able to get a massive discount, guys, for those who are interested. So let me come back to the Bitcoin. So here I was saying we have this nice consolidation. It's not nice, actually. It's a consolidation. We saw on the hourly time frame that many traders were around this trend line. So we have a consolidation, but guys, it's not a very nice consolidation. Okay. I could show you in the past. Let me go in another chart. All right. Look at that, guys. This is... All right, this is what I'm going to teach you in my course, guys. I'm going to teach you how to trade a triangle, how to trade a wedge, how to trade a reversal pattern, a reversal breakout, how to trade a continuation breakout. I'm going to show you how to avoid fake outs, all the different patterns, the cup and handle, the zigzag. And here you have many, many breakouts, guys. And I've been going through that for the past couple of weeks when I record these videos and I studied Bitcoin a lot. And I can tell you that this breakout is good, but compared to, for example, here, look how was the consolidation very nice and very long. We're talking about two, three weeks consolidation before this huge move up, All right, Here, it's been only one week. We are consolidating on low volume. To me, this breakout is not perfect, but it's definitely tradable. So I'm not gonna show you the past. I'm gonna show you what I think might happen in the future, guys. So. We said we have a good breakout because we have a volume increase. We have a small consolidation just before that is showing us that this trend line is reliable. It's visible, followed by other traders. We have a bullish regular divergence here. The MACD is going higher. As you can see, the MACD is the blue curve. The price action is going lower, which is showing us, guys, that we have the bears are out of steam. So whenever you have a regular divergence combined with a breakout, you have a bullish signal, all right? So momentum is good. We are above the 20 day moving average, which is good. We have a volume increase. We have a small consolidation that happened before the breakout on low volume, which showing us that we have balance between bulls and bears. And you need to have this balance before a sustainable reversal can happen. Okay. I'm going to show you then the targets that are not very high, <laughs> but it's still a reversal that might give us a good bullish signal for the coming weeks. Okay. Volume, I checked it. Volatility, yeah. And the problem I have is that the volatility, we like to see Bollinger Bands very tight, guys, before breakout. Look here how tight they were. And you can go in the past and check it, guys. This is what I'm showing you in my course. They're very tight everywhere, every time before a breakout. And here they're not very tight, guys. Okay, so that's telling me that this breakout is not perfect. I give it a grade, uh, like I said, guys, on my Discord for those who are there. 
I showed you my trades, guys, that I'm going to do today. And I give it a 7 on 10 grade, which means there is a 30% chance to me we fake out. So it's not a perfect breakout, but it's good enough for me to get in. Once again, because I have a big volume, because I have a trend line very visible, I have a move that closed at the top of the day, guys, uh, which is very good. It means it shows that bulls were in full control. There, were, there was not any attack of bears like Wells who could have actually tried to trap investors. So maybe they're going to do, it, do that later, you know, probably, by the way, <laughs> but not right now. OK, so I think that right now bears will slowly let it go and bulls will take back confidence and will start to be buyers. But as the consolidation is small, guys, all right, this consolidation is not big. It's a small consolidation. And whenever the consolidation is small, a retest is likely to happen. And I'm explaining that, guys, and I'm giving you all the features of what makes a retest uh, more likely to happen. And a small consolidation is one of them. So in this situation, we're going to use FIBS to enter. So we measure the last move up, guys and we check where the fib ratios are all right and we try to make it in line with the moving average and with the trend line we test so here the moving average the 20 day moving average is at 38 500 and the trend line we test is at it depends when it happens but around here i would say okay so those are my buying levels and i'm just checking that they're in line with fib ratios that are between 38.2 and 61.8 this is the buying area guys okay so those are my orders i'm not using stop loss on bitcoin because i don't want to get trapped but it's better to have mental stop loss so that i'm going to go and sell manually around 35 okay so this is my trade guys i'm sharing it with you and bam this is what I'm going to do today. Okay, guys, I'm going to be a buyer 30, even higher 39. Okay, I don't want to miss it. 39. I'm going to buy more a bit lower and I'm going to stop everything here. So guys, I've just shown you a little example of how to trade Bitcoin. Let's see if I am correct or not. Then as I think we're in a B wave, so I associate the breakout technique that I have here with my Elliott wave counting that is telling me that we are probably in a B wave. And then I'm checking B waves, where can they go? I have my natural resistance levels that are around 44 and 52. I check the fib ratios. Fib ratios are the B waves usually go to the 38.2, so 47,000, guys, it's quite high. I will still take profit a little bit at 44, so basically between 44 and it can even go higher, guys, it can go to 55. I don't see a Bitcoin at 55, but I mean, if you use fibs, it could go there. Strong B waves go to the 61.8%. So let's see. I personally will take profits between 44 and 52. And I'm going to get ready for a potential C wave. And once again, if we have here extremely high volume involved during this B wave, as I showed you guys, go check the video I posted last week. If we have very high volume here, okay, during this B wave, like for the coming month, all right like we had before, look in the past, how high were the volume during moves up. If we have that, it will tell me that this counting might be wrong and that the other one might be correct and that we might already be in a one, two, three, four, five that goes to 100,000. But this is not my preferred scenario for now. And I'm going to keep an eye on the volume, on the amplitude of the moves and on every indicator related to volatility, volume and momentum to see if the scenario is the one that is likely to happen. So that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to click on the sub, like and bell button. So you're going to be the first to know when I upload anything new and stay close to shore. I see you guys.